Hi everyone, it's Owen here from Otec, and in this video, I decided to do something different compared to normal unboxing on this Gigabyte Aorus X570i Pro Wi-Fi motherboard, which is that there's no box at all. I just kind of already took it out because I figured that actually lots of you guys just wanted to see the product, so let's just get right into it. Uh, this is not a full review, it's just like a first look kind of thing on this motherboard. I know I'm really late, but it's only now that I'm doing my mini ITX PC build, and you might have already seen that I was using an ASUS Trix B450i, but this popped back in stock, so I ordered this one and returned that one. So I'll be using this board instead for my PC build. Anyways, let's go and take a look at this board. So, this is based on the X570 chipset, and because of that, it has a chipset fan just like every other X570 motherboard. Which, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of, but I think that is necessary because... If you guys didn't know, the chipset on X570 motherboards is based on the uh, I.O. die chiplet inside the Ryzen CPUs itself, except it's on a chipset to run the uh, additional interfaces. So that's why it uses quite a lot of power, and that's why it needs a fan, according to AMD. But some testing by reviewers have found out that you don't really need the fan for m the most case, so the fan really shouldn't turn on or be audible unless you're really doing something with the chipset like doing a rated setup or uh, maybe using a lot of io so i don't think it should be a problem but yeah i preferred if there was no fan in it actually but you know what let's just take a look at the chipset cooling system first because that is the most interesting part of this motherboard so as you can see here they have like a double stack heatsink with the uh nvme uh drive heatsink as well so how it works is that the chipset sits down below and the NVMe drive sits on the top where the fan is. And basically, it's it's not like it's a connected heatsink. It's more like there's two heatsinks heat that's like stacked and kind of overlaps. So the top part with the fan, it doesn't really get blown air. And the top part just uh, is the NVMe heatsink. While the bottom part, which has the uh, chipset heatsink on here, that, that, that chipset heatsink is what's getting the most of the airflow from the fan. Although if you put an NVMe drive, the airflow will basically only come out this side and on this side, not directly on the chipset heatsink. But I think it's a pretty clever design to save space because, you know, actually we've seen a lot of uh, manufacturers try to do like some interesting design choices with X570 motherboards on the ITX form factor just because of their necessary to have a heatsink fan because AMD specifies a higher TDP, I'm guessing. Anyways, uh, now we'll take a look around on the VRM area because this is the most interesting part as well. Or, you know, second interesting or first, depending on what's your priority. But this thing has an extra powerful VRM. Now you might see here, there's lots of phases. But yes, this board has 8 phases for the CPU and they have 70 amp power stages. So this thing is, uh, yeah, pretty powerful. Power IR 70 amp power stages. I think 6 is dedicated to the CPU and 2 is to the SOC and it's all under this giant heatsink and this thing will handle any Ryzen 9 3900X or 3950X overclock just fine because you know even my Strix B450 which has a pretty weak sauce VRM with only like uh, 240 watts maximum uh, current uh, handled that just fine too. I actually already built my system but this will handle it even better so I'm looking forward to trying a uh, per CCX overclock with this, see if I actually get better numbers than the Strix B450i. But yeah, this has a massive heatsink, so temperature shouldn't be a problem. And, you know, they have put, like, some fins on it. Not quite a lot of surface area, but it's, this has lots of mass, and the board is quite heavy because of this heatsink, which also doubles as a I.O. cover. So I think that looks pretty nice, too. And speaking of the I.O., you can see that the I.O. has an integrated... Uh, backplate uh, cover thing instead of having an IO cover that you put in yourself so that's pretty nice and that's pretty much a high-end feature that that's only on like more expensive motherboards and you know this is quite nice but I would have liked to seen if they have like a flexible IO shield integrated IO shield like uh, ASRock does because some cases just doesn't fit too well and you might want it to be a bit more flexible just in case the spacing on the case isn't as perfect and on top here, there's the CPU power input, obviously, uh, for the VRMs, and it's just a single A pin. It should really be enough, you know. ATX motherboards sometimes have two inputs. It's really just for show, and 
yeah, one is just enough to push like a 16 core Ryzen. Anyways, uh, you also get one uh, fan connector and only one other one here. So there's only two. That's the only bad thing that I've seen about this board is that it doesn't really have that many fan connectors. The Asus one has like uh, three or yeah, it's way more useful. I wish that they put they that put like uh, I wish that they'd put like more fan connectors on this board, but it's I don't think it's a big deal. I can just use fan splitters, and that's what I'm gonna do in my build because it's an ITX build anyway. So you won't use that many fans. Anyways, uh, this board also has obviously PCIe connector and two DDR4 slots, as well as all the outputs for USB 3.0. Although sadly, it doesn't have internal USB Type C, which I really am quite annoyed because I really wish they'd put that but this board is already quite crammed as is and also on this board there's a second M.2 connector on the back which you can see here and the nice thing is they also put this shield all on the back of the motherboard whoops I touched the camera uh, and yeah this just looks really nice although I hope that this doesn't uh, cause like compatibility, compatibility issues with some cases uh, but I don't think it should and it does have the M.2 on the back, um, which might not be the greatest for airflow. So if you're using an M.2 at the back, make sure it's not a drive that you're going to be hammering it with the most workload and have that drive on the front with the fan on it. Anyways, the front slot is also wired to the CPU with uh, uh, four lanes of PCIe 4.0 because as you know, Ryzen 3000 has PCIe 4.0, just like all the AMD 500 series chipsets. As well as on the back, it's, it's also X4 4.0, except this lane goes through the chipset. And then from the chipset, it goes to the CPU. So there's going to be a bit more overhead on this lane, but it really shouldn't be a problem. And they even allow you to RAID 0 both drive slots for a theoretical max uh, performance of like 8 gigabytes or like, well, technically 10 gigabyte reads on like the Corsair MP600 or the XPG S50, you know, all those Fizen based of PCIe 4.0 NVMe drives so this can have some insane storage performance if you want to and I was contemplating using two drives just because but I guess I'm not gonna do that because it's pretty stupid I guess I should also take off this plastic because it's quite annoying I won't need that so there you go not quite a satisfying peel should have done that earlier but yeah now you can see the board in all its glory without any plastic crap on it and yeah, for the I.O., uh, well, there's just uh, the normal stuff. There's like some USB. Uh, curiously, they have lots of display outputs, which I don't understand because, uh, yeah, who's going to use an APU on this uh, socket anyways on X570? So, yeah, maybe the Ryzen 4000 uh, with APUs with like eight cores and uh, lots of Vega cores might be quite interesting if you're using this board. That's why they're doing that maybe. But yeah. I think they put too much uh, display outs and not enough USB uh, connectors because there's really only five of them here and just one USB type C. So that's quite annoying, but you can also see this board has a key flash function, which is gigabytes function to flash the BIOS without any CPU or RAM. So that's quite handy if you need to uh, flash this to a newer BIOS without having a CPU handy for like future CPUs, for example. Also on the back, you see the audio input and outputs and as well as the uh, Wi-Fi connectors for the antenna and the Wi-Fi is also pretty good It has a Wi-Fi 6 standard AX Intel chip in it And it has also an Intel gigabit Ethernet chip for the NIC as well So while those are well and good the funny thing is that the B550 motherboards actually get like a 2.5 gig NIC on some of the higher-end boards So funnily enough the X570 is actually less uh, of a <clears throat> So funnily enough, the X570 is actually uh, left behind compared to B550 in the networking department. Although their Wi-Fi is pretty much the same, they all have Wi-Fi 6 these days since that's all the rage. But yeah, that's about it on this motherboard. It looks like a pretty good ITX AM4 X570 motherboard option. It has a pretty strong VRM and as well as a uh, you know, pretty good looking design and uh, looks like a pretty well thought out cooling system. So it also looks like it's on the right price you know they're usually in the low 200 range compared to closer to 300 or even 400 plus like the asus impact board so yeah if you're looking for an x570 board this looks like a good option although i haven't tested it personally but i think from the reviews i've seen this should be a pretty good board
well, I'll look into it once I've got it running in my system. So if you like this video, please leave a like and please click subscribe to see more of my future videos. Thanks for watching.